What do you call a man without a beard? A woman. Whoa! Holy shit. My lord, I already have buyer's remorse. I was just thinking about something on the build and I went to stroke my beard because I'm used to thinking like that and there's nothing there. But you know what? This kind of makes me think I want to really want to grow out a, uh, a giant handlebar mustache. I'm reading this book right now that's about the fall of the Roman Empire. It's by an author named Peter Heather. And uh, the main protagonists in the story are, all, are actually all these Germanic tribes from Northern Europe. And they're basically like Vikings 1.0. They worship the same group of gods like Thor and Odin and Frigg. They're running on the same social cultural software, but this is happening about a half a millennia before the Viking Age. Their names that you would recognize today, the Burgundians, the Franks, right? That's what modern day France is named after. The Angles and the Saxons, the Anglo-Saxons who, who found what is modern day England. We're speaking English, is the modern dialect of the Angles, Anglish. Vandals, that's where we get the word to vandalize. The Goths, the Bohemians. There's all these super cool names that I think most of you would recognize. And where they ended up settling, they basically formed what is today modern day Europe. So this is a wild story. The reason I'm telling you this background is the key difference between these guys, these Germanic tribes and the later Vikings, basically the same ethos, but instead of having giant beards, they had giant handlebar mustaches. So I think that's so cool. So if you think that's a good idea, please leave me a comment below. I don't know, handlebar mustaches from the fall of Rome? It's pretty cool in my books. I am James A. Lofts. I left the big city to build an off-grid homestead on 40 acres of Canadian wilderness. This area of Ontario has giant ridgelines, deep valleys, and pure rivers. Black bears, gray wolves, mountain lions, moose, and many forest spirits share the land. I started in November 2023. Starting with a modest 12 by 16 foot guest cabin, my goal is to build such a glorious homestead that I attract a magnificent wife, have 10 babies, and raise an Irish wolfhound. Welcome to Wild Homestead. Hey ho, let's go. Next step on the cabin, going to be doing the support beams. I'm probably going to double up the number of plywood support beams underneath these uh, eaves beams here. Now, one thing to remember is that when you're using a 45 degree roof like this, it's very steep. Almost all my neighbors in this area have 45 degree slope roofs. And one of the reasons for that is that this area gets an enormous amount of precipitation, both snow and rain. So with a roof this steep, what happens is the snow nine times out of ten it's just going to build up a little bit and then it's going to slide right off this roof will probably not be holding very much snow there will not be hundreds or thousands of pounds of snow on top of this roof throughout the winter months
There we go. Okay, I'm going to try to get up the rafters here on uh, that end, finish off that end. I'm just cutting a first one here. This board is really kind of curved, so I'm not going to use this as a template. Thanks, guys. You know, a bunch of uh, subscribers out there leaving comments and sending me emails about, you know, make one rafter and then use it as a template for all the other ones. And if it works on the four separate corners, that means it'll probably work on all the other ones in between. You know, because this is literally the first roof, the first building, I've never even built a shed before. Um, I'm kind of, you know, cautious with how I'm doing this. So I'm kind of doing one at a time and being a 12-12, a 45 degree pitch roof, it means the measurements are super easy to do. Um, there's basically no, uh, you know, craziness using the speed square because everything, this is a 45 degree angle. So I basically am just lining this up on my, on my uh, measurement points and then it's really, really easy. But just in case, you know, I don't know, there's some warping in these two by fours. I'm just doing one at a time, just in case I discover, ah, two in a row, there's gaps opening up in this bird's mouth and then I can kind of course correct. I probably won't. If it works on the four corners, it should work everywhere else. But it's just so fast, to be honest, doing it with a, uh, a 45 degree slope because everything's on a 45 degree angle that I think I'm probably just gonna keep doing it like this. Tonight it's going to be a low of plus four. It's an end of an era. End of an era. The sleeping in a hot tent in negative temperatures for four months is now officially over. Literally almost four months to the day I got here November 4th. It's now April 7th. What a wild ride, man. If I knew how hard this is going to be, there's no way. <laughs> I, I would have waited to spring. I would have waited to spring, but you know what? It was a hell of an adventure. That is for sure. Who goes out at the start of winter into the wilderness to build a cabin? It's pretty stupid. You know, the main thing was, is I just couldn't stand the thought of spending another another winter in downtown Toronto. You know, I had the property. I'm like, I'm going to go do, do, do it in spring. You know, do further research, learn more, be more prepared. But like literally two weeks out from coming up here, I was just like, screw it, let's do this. To please the gods, one must entertain them, you know? So you might think that's a ridiculous statement, but if you think about it, I mean, that's in Norse mythology, that is like one of the, not, uh, you know, the 10 commandments. 
So if you think about it, whatever you do in life, if you are going to be more bold, more ambitious, if it would entertain a guy like Thor or Odin or Freya, it's probably a pretty cool plan. <laughs> and the world probably needs it. So I like it. You guys hear all, I don't know if you can hear all those birds, but there's dozens, dozens of bird calls now that I have just in the past few days, I have never heard before. It must be all the returning birds now in the spring. So I'm just heading into town to uh, do a resupply on food. I also need to get some more hardware. Uh, you see the front there, that next stage, that is the open chasm between the loft floor and the front. There's like an eight foot drop there. So there's a few pieces. Basically what I wanna do is use these logs, leftover logs to create a temporary floor. The eclipse, the eclipse is about to happen. I've never seen the, the sun like this, the coloration. I don't know if you can tell, it's hard to tell, but it's just super creepy. The shadows are bizarre. I don't know if you can tell through the, the camera here, but. right after the eclipse, a single, I don't know if it was a craven or a row, some member of the Corvid family flies directly overhead. Very cool.
Holy Hades, ladies and gentlemen, this is quite uh, precarious. I mean, these two logs up here are quite thick and sturdy, but it's just, you know, there's only two feet of uh, three quarter inch plywood on either side of me. So I'm just kind of sweating the whole time I'm up, I'm up here. You know what, it just kind of hit me. This is gonna be kind of spectacular because when you walk in the door, there's gonna be this giant chasm here up to the roof. It's eight feet walls and then six feet to the bottom, you know, basically to where this ridge beam is. So, you know, we're talking 14 feet. That's kind of like really cool. And then this is plenty of, this is out to basically like 10 and a half feet, 11 feet. And uh, yeah, it's going to be cool up here, guys. Me and Sophie Turner are checking out the sunset and the ridgeline. Yeah, with the Irish wolfhound. Ladies and gentlemen, what a beautiful spring morning we got out here. It's been raining. It's about 9 a.m. And uh, great. I can actually smell the forest now. I can smell all the pine trees and stuff. I have not smelled that since I came out here. And so not only are the birds coming back, but all the smells are coming back. And it's, it's quite magical. I was having horrible headaches yesterday. My ears are hurt again. It's not, um, it was after cutting that gable end, I had my custom $300 uh, earplugs in. I had my, you know, good Swedish uh, chainsawing helmet with the earmuffs on, and it still messed up my ears. I think it might be because I was holding the chainsaws, you know, up at head height when I was cutting, but still with double ear protection, like the chainsaw helmet alone is technically speaking good enough to protect your hearing. Uh, and it wasn't like I was chainsawing for hours. You know, I was chainsawing for maybe five or 10 minutes. So my ears were ringing for about two days and it went away. So it's not, you know, tinnitus, which is you've got that ringing noise that just continues on. But I feel like my eardrums are like inflamed from that.
Oh my God, look at that. Thor's red oak has turned green. He was like, it was like a dark brown all winter. And now it's green. Look at that. That's crazy, man. You can, I don't know if you guys can see this, but these branches down here, you can see how they've been cut. And that's the rabbits. That's the work of these evil terrorist rabbits, those branches. So I don't know if any of those, see, look at this one. Boom, boom, boom. Took off all those branches. So I don't know what's going to happen if those things can still grow, if they're going to die. But at least the main stem looks good. We got some buds on the top there. Okay, let's do a speed test to see how fast I can get a rafter done. So this is probably not a very good idea for someone who's building their first roof they've ever built. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to try to do something called, essentially, I think it's called like a cantilevered um, roof front. So it's going to be like angled out, almost like a chalet style. So there's going to be an angle from here going out. Um, it's going to give extra coverage over the front area. I think it's going to look cool. I've seen some pictures of it online. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't see a lot of like log cabin builders necessarily do this. Um, so I found a little trick on how to do it and watch how I cut this rafter different than the other ones.
So this first board, you know, this side is pretty clean, the one that I was uh, using the chisel down, but on the back side, the chisel was causing this kind of cracking. I think it's fine. I mean, I don't have any more wood. It seems to be more just appearance, aesthetics than structural. But uh, I tried using the Sawzall to cut like five little grooves at the top of each hole on these ones before using the chisel. And it seemed to be a lot better. Not perfect, but a lot better by making those five little grooves first before using the chisel. Be yeah, any woodworkers out there, how would you tackle, you know, if you can cut down, but then how do you tackle bringing this part of the wood out um, most cleanly? Please leave uh, your suggestions in the comments.
Hello, sir. Holy Lord and Redeemer, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was just my neighbor. He was making the old bird call as he was walking into the field. And uh, so giant storm rolling in tonight, uh, danger of flash flooding. It's pretty crazy. After he left, I just uh, opened up my weather app and there's a uh, uh, flash flooding warning from Environment and Climate Change Canada. So, uh, you know, this guy's grown up in this area his whole life, and this is the first time that he's come over to warn me about any weather up here and through all the storms in the winter and stuff. Because he said, because the ground is still frozen, Environment Climate Change Canada estimated we're going to get 60 to 80 millimeters of rain uh, during this duration. So that's six to eight centimeters, right? That's like whatever, three to four inches of rain. That's a huge amount. So, you know, my objective today was, um, today is Wednesday, was to get uh, all the, ra the the last few rafters done, get all the hurricane ties at the bottom of the rafters done, put up the sheathing, and then finish off the sheathing, the plywood sheathing, which is the surface of the roof, you know, tomorrow. Um, and I said to him, like, what do you think about that plan? He's like, I would not do that. He's like, uh, try to get, batten down all the hatches um, today, I think it's about 11 a.m., Batten down all the hatches um, and uh, make sure you get all your hurricane ties in on your roof, he said, because these are going to be huge winds as well because um, you can't have the bottom of the thing not, you know, tied down. So I'm going to I'm going to go with his suggestion. The other thing is uh, almost all of my plywood sheathing, the three quarter inch sheathing is out near the road, just under a light tarp. I want to bring all that back and that's going to take a while um, to get that back on the cart. Uh, back to the build site because I've got my really heavy duty big tarp back here. Kind of reminds me of my favorite TV show, Vikings, in the uh, the first season when Ragnar and Rolo and Floki are are sailing over to England for the first time. Um, they get hit by this giant storm, and instead of praying to Njord, who is the you know Viking, the Germanic uh, god of the sea. He, they pray to Thor, and it's interesting because Thor, he's the god of strength, he's the god of protector of Midgard, but he's also the god of storms. So um, because tomorrow is Thor's day, I'm going to have to say a few prayers to Thor. Look at this beautiful ladder. So this is what um, I requested my neighbor to borrow from him, and he so graciously brought it over uh, when warning me about the storm. So this is what's going to allow me um, to complete the sheathing in the roof because I just lay it up on the 45 degree angle right up the roof. Look at this, you know, when he came, um, I think it was about, I think it was about 11 a.m. It was still bright and sunny. It's already clouded over. Look at this. Okay, Environment and Climate Change Canada, they just updated the uh, the storm warning to severe. I'll throw it up, a, a screenshot of it up on my phone. It says significant threat to life and property. <laughs> Honestly, man, th this makes me excited. This is like, this is cool, man. I just hope it doesn't take out. Don't take out Thor's Red Oak. That's the only thing I request. the hell happened to that tree? What 
the hell is going on over there? Are those turkey vultures? Hey ho, let's go. Before I lean that ladder up against that end gable um, to further secure the shearing, like the back and forth support on the gables, every additional rafter that I think I tie in, they're already all tied in along the ridge beam, but every additional rafter I also tie in with the Hurricanes ties on the bottom, I think will help with that back and forth stability. Also, these things, these are the same brackets that I used to secure the ridge beam to the that ridge board right it's sitting on top like this i'm gonna those two end raft sets of end rafters that sit right on top of the gables i am going to use these i'm going to put one on each side and tie that rafter in super tight to the uh gable beneath it and that way that'll help with the back and forth i think as well Hello. So before I put in the hurricane ties for the rest of the rafters, I'm going to put in the final blocking, um, the supports underneath my top plate there. So um, I'm going to be using vertical blocks of two by fours instead of these stacked ones, because this way it's much faster. And I'm going to be putting them directly beneath the rafters. I think it's better to put it in now. Well, uh, I can still slide the rafter tail, you know, back and forth a little bit. I just want to take a, a little break and tell you about an incredible moving story, an email that was sent to me by one of my subscribers. The person wrote a very, very long essay about how to solve world peace. And the central tenet of their argument is that if only every human on earth could have access to berries and cherries, we would know eternal peace. Three words, nine syllables, the secret to life, ooga booga, we have 
100% of the rafters done. We've got all the hurricane ties done on this side. Um, we do not have the hurricane ties done on the other side. We need to do the blocking, the extra blocking over there as well. The extra blocking is done on this side. I'm super happy, even though we had a short four day work week, uh, I felt like got a lot done. This was a pain in the butt. This took me about three hours getting all that uh, plywood back here on the cart. But uh, I think it's looking super good. I'm really happy, man. I wanted to get some of that sheathing up, but uh, I just phoned my neighbor and I said, how's the Doppler looking? Because he actually has a, uh, a Starlink unit at his place. He said it's going to start getting real nasty probably around 10 o'clock. So it's 8 o'clock right now. The sun is setting. And I'm super excited to get these 2x4 braces in at the front uh, of the cabin where the big overhang is. This is going to give us an extra two feet of coverage by having a slanted cantilever coming out of the front of the cabin. And what's going on next week? Got to put up the sheathing, the plywood sheathing. On top of that is a uh, waterproof membrane and then putting like one by three little strapping. And then that's what the steel roof, which is up in the forest, tarped up. Uh, that's what the steel roof is screwed down into. As long as I don't get washed away by these flash floods tonight, hopefully, and the cabin doesn't. But otherwise, we'll see you next week on Wild Homestead.